911. What is your emergency? Somebody was traveling the wrong way, and two people just had a head-on collision. They're not responding. I like they're not conscious. They're not in the van. They're not. Does it look like they're dead? Possibly, yes. No. On the morning of July 31st, 2011, um, my son was in a wreck on his way home from work, and he was hit head on by a drunk driver. I went to the emergency room, and they began to tell me the long list of injuries. I would go in when I would go to see Kevin and pretty much just tell him, you know, listen to your mama. <laughs> You're not done. You have a purpose. You got to get up out of that bed. Tell Jesus you can't stay. Um, and it was just kind of pretty adamant with him. She did not let up. And all the um, training, all the, um, the things that we watched from Brother Copeland, all the uh, faith was, I mean, she grabbed a hold of it and she wasn't letting go. And she wouldn't let anyone talk any negative. She wouldn't let, what are you gonna say you know, when you go in? Uh, she was very protective. But on August the 1st, 2011 at 8.57 in the morning, we went up to hear good news because we were trusting that God would raise him from the dead. Um, instead, we heard that he was brain dead. And I leaned down and I said, Kev, mom's not ready for you to go. And I heard his voice so audibly, I thought he woke up. He said, mom, it's too painful. Those were the words that I heard. And I stood up expecting to see his eyes open. And when I realized that he hadn't woke up, I knew that I was hearing from heaven. And as I stood there looking at Kevin, and it just kind of dawned on me what I was asking Kevin to do. And I realized that he was in the face of Jesus, where he'd always lived his life to be. And I thought, how selfish of me to ask him to come back when he was right there. And um, I just looked at him and I said, Kev, mom will be okay. And I let him go at that point. We went in, in this room off the ICU waiting room uh, to pray. And I started praying out loud. And I heard myself say, God, I forgive her and what she's done to our family. All we knew it was a female, didn't know anything else. God had already told me that we, we needed to forgive this person. And when he told me that, I was like, I am not telling <laughs> her that. I said, if you want her to know that, you're going to have to tell her yourself. I am not going there, God. I'm not doing it. I opened my eyes because I thought, did I just really say that out loud? Because I surprised myself that I said that. And when she said that in that prayer, I, I started crying. I started broke down because I thought, yes, thank you, Jesus. Eventually, because I kept speaking God's Word, even though I didn't feel like it, even though my, my head was, you know, yelling other things at me, and I continued to work through that process, speaking the Word and speaking over myself, it eventually changed my feelings. I chose to not allow what this woman did to trap me in a jail cell when I had the key to let me go. And forgiveness is freedom. I was so ashamed and embarrassed of what I had done. Um, I really didn't know how to deal with it. She came onto the news and I remember seeing, it was like she was looking right at me. And she said, Letitia, if you're watching this, I forgive you. I knew that I didn't deserve it. Um, so it's kind of hard to accept. I, I didn't understand why she would forgive me, but um, it was, I guess, comforting knowing that she um, had said that to me. She was sentenced to eight years vehicular homicide by intoxication and six years supervised probation after that. 11 months later, 
I get a phone call. She's coming up for parole. And so when I hung up the phone, I was like, God, really? Is Kevin's life not more than 11 months? And he said, you said you trusted me, that when it was my timing and I knew she was ready to get out, that you would be okay with that. And I was like, I know, but 11 months. And he said, do you trust me? Yes. If you know she's ready to get out now, I'll be okay with it. I said, but I have no idea what to say to the pro board. And he said, sit down and write what you hear. When it was my turn, I just read what God had me to write. And I started it off with, um, I'm guilty of murder too. And the person that I killed, his father accepts me, loves me as one of his own kids, doesn't hold what I did over my head, doesn't beat me up with it. And so who am I to not extend that same forgiveness that I've been given? And that person that I killed was Jesus. Am I saying what she did was okay? Absolutely not. But we can go forward together and make an impact together. And then about two weeks later, she got the news that uh, she was granted parole. She was released um, in November of 2013. And uh, we started speaking together in January of 2014 and uh, haven't stopped since. We go to high schools, rehab centers, community events, uh, anywhere and everywhere that allow us to come and share our story of um, the dangers and consequences of drinking and driving. But the message that shines through is the story of forgiveness. Knowing that we can help someone with our story, that means everything to me. Like that is a lot of how I can accept the forgiveness and try to move forward is knowing that we're doing good um, in the world, you know, that we're trying to help other people uh, not have to go through what we've been through. So it's wonderful being able to share.